Hi, everyone, and welcome to Weather or Not, sponsored by TD Bank. I'm WABC Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg. We're in the home weather office today. Maybe you recognize it from the pandemic. We did many forecasts from here, but there's no issues today. We just got a morning window of availability to have a really special interview today because we're recording this on the 25th of June, and there's a big launch today of a brand new weather satellite. It's the fourth in a series of four of the Goes R program, and this is called Goes U. It will ultimately ultimately become GOES-19. So we get to speak to someone from NOAA today, tell you about all the capabilities of this brand new satellite, how it's going to help weather forecasting, and how it's going to keep you safe. So let's get right to the interview. Joining us now, Tom Ray Gebbins, NOAA Chief Satellite Products and Services Division. Tom, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, such an exciting day for you uh, at NOAA and the big satellite launch coming up, hopefully weather permitting later today. Correct, yes. Exciting. Thanks for having me. So we have to go back nearly 50 years to GOES-1, and here we are at what will ultimately be GOES-19. Uh, can, you, can you explain your excitement today, uh, You know, looking back at all that history and, and all the new technology that will go and help and keep us safe going into space today? It's an exciting time. I've been in the satellite business for more than 30 years. I grew up in New Jersey, got the weather bug in the 70s with some big snowstorms there. So this is an exciting time to see past what we've had capabilities they have hourly pictures if you will to today with the ghost 19 the imager on board we can get pictures of the earth every 30 seconds in a, in a size of, of about the size of pences uh, and that can monitor for hurricanes severe weather floods uh it's a really exciting time so we'll, we'll get to the scans and, and the resolution opening in just a second i want to start out with with our viewers who are just trying to understand what this GOES program is all about, what these satellites are all about. Can we give sort of a, a, a satellite 101? So the GOES satellites, Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite, they orbit the Earth at the same pace as the Earth's rotation. So basically they're hovering over the Earth at 22,000 plus miles above. If these are the pictures you see on TV, the nightly news, the favorite weather app. So the pictures of hurricanes, the pictures of severe weather, the pictures of snowstorms, the cell energy to see for that is what we are providing with the GOES-19 satellite. So this GOES program goes R, correct? And this is the fourth of four satellites. That is correct, yes. And this one ultimately will replace GOES-16, which I feel like was just launched yesterday. It, you know, it feels like GOES-16 was just launched yesterday. GOES-16 was launched in 2016, believe it or not. And this is the fourth and final in that series. It launched this today in 2024. It will replace, once it's operational, possibly April of next year, it will replace GO-16 on the east. And so that is the one that monitors the Atlantic Ocean for hurricanes. It's the one that your viewers in New York will look at for the weather. So in terms of its capability, how much higher resolution is it than the previous GO satellite, or is it on par? The, the resolution of these satellites, the GOES R series, is about four times uh, better than the previous series. For example, you can see an object uh, at a half a kilometer on the ground in the visible spectrum, meaning basically a picture on the Earth. A couple of years ago, a decade ago, that was four times as worse. Uh, and in the future, we'll be getting four times as better. So look forward to the 2030s, more incremental improvements will be had. In terms of the practical uses in forecasting, I know this is uh, what our viewers are going to be so concerned about, especially in an era where our weather seems to be so supercharged. How will this help us in forecasting? This, the information for the weather satellites, all the NOAA satellites, first and foremost, are using the weather forecast models. So your three-day, five-day, seven-day forecasts are all, all informed by weather satellites. And as we talked about, the imagery helps with uh, watches and warnings, whether you have a tornado warning or floods. I know you in New York City, that's some tremendous floods over the past year. So the information and data go to weather service forecasters, go to TV meteorologists, and allow to inform the public uh, of how to be safe, how to take precautions. I'll just go through a couple of the, the very important, um, whether it be weather or fire, uh, some of the things they look at, I'll just quickly kind of run through a list with you. And if you could just give me an idea of, of how this might help with its scans, looking at hurricanes, is it valuable? The imagery for hurricanes is invaluable. We can see these storms coming off the coast of Africa well before a hurricane other can get out there. So we are the eye in the sky. So we can see it from formation all the way across the Atlantic, through the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico. 
all the way through Lyak Bowl. And you can see the swirling in the eye, the rotations, the intensity, and the geostationary lightning mapper, the GLM on board the satellite. You can see if there's an intensification in the eye wall band, and that can indicate strength or weakening of the hurricane. So very important. I was just about to move into severe weather, which obviously you mentioned lightning, and I, and I know that there's some collaboration with University of Wisconsin, they're lightning forecasting. Uh, we're really, go, that's so important. You go ahead, you can comment on that. So the GOES R series has the geostationary lightning map around the world, the GLM. And so yes, we can see lightning across the whole of the United States, about the, about, about the ground lightning. Very important in identifying areas of severe weather, rapid intense pitch the hurricanes, I used to be a storm chaser back in the 1990s when I was living in Oklahoma. If we had that data back then, it would have been a game changer. So let, that's really important to get the hands of forecasters to make those warnings and watches available for the public. Uh, how about fire detection? So for wildfire detection, the GOES satellites can see wildfires uh, and smoke. Uh, as you recall, last year we had a tremendous amount of smoke coming down from Canada last April. And so our satellites can detect those fires burning whether it's in Canada, the United States, Central and South America, and see the smoke and, and that's your mind as well for air quality purposes. Yeah, I mean, one of the things is that um, it, it really can discern the resolution, whether it's fire from clouds, snow from clouds, fog from clouds, that resolution is amazing to be able to detect that. It is. The, the imager on board that goes our goes you satellite series today has what we call 16 spectral channels. And what that really means is you can see different pr parameters. You can see water vapor, you can see fires, you can see smoke, you can see ice clouds, water clouds. It, it's a tremendous a kit, a asset that we can see all these different parameters from space. Okay, one of the special two that's unique to Goes U will be, I believe it's, to correct me if I'm wrong, but the coronagraph, is that correct? So Goes 19 has a new instrument on board called a compact coronagraph, otherwise known as the c -Core. That monitors space and solar activities, primarily the coronal mass ejections that come off the sun. Now, we often see that in terms of aurora borealis, but that also is what causes geomagnetic storms, which can be a detrimental effect to satellites, navigation systems, GPS, and communication. So this is the first time our satellites have this instrument, the C-Core, on board. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it, we're doing more frequent scanning with that. So in terms of analyzing this corona, we're going to have more current information, which would make a huge difference in a huge solar storm. So the compact chronograph or the, the C-Core will provide images every 15 minutes to the space wow. that are located in Boulder, Colorado. And so they will be able to issue similar watches or warnings for space weather. And people that use that would be power grid operators, satellite operators, communication operations. And so, yes, it, it's going to be a, a game changer for the space weather community. Uh, coming off of the G5 storm and, and the auroras in places we never talked about, the strongest storm in a couple of decades, uh, it's on the forefront of people's minds. So what a timely, um, you know, new, uh, you know, piece of equipment in space. I, I actually drove to Western Maryland and saw it myself. Did you really? I had fog up here and we were had reports all around our area. And unfortunately, you I ran into some fog. Still a fight. Yeah. Fog, drove 20 miles less. Still a bucket list thing for me. Um, let's talk about when this will go into practice. So, I mean, there is sort of a transition period after it's launched. So, goes you once it's launched, it will become goes 19 in about two weeks. And then as first baby pictures of the imager, the lightning mapper, and the space weather instruments will be available starting in August and through October. Then once we check everything out, it will become the operational goes east satellite about April of 2025. And for those of us that are so uh, thankful for GOES-16, these satellites have lived beyond their expected lifetime, so this could be used in other ways too, right? Absolutely. These satellites have a 10-year lifespan, is what they're built for, but we've had some satellites last way beyond what they're expected. We've used them uh, for South America. We've been in some satellites recently for the Space Force to, to monitor the Inge Ocean. We even had one satellite last several decades, more of a communication satellite. So we, we try to squeeze every ounce of data we can out of that. And of course, the next step, I'm sure there's a, another series in the works. After the GOES U series, GOES 19, we'll have these up in orbit for about another decade or so. But after that, we already work with NASA and our industry partners on GEOXO, Geostationary Extended Observations. That's planning to launch about 2032. It will have improved imagery, so better resolution to see those fires, fog, aviation hazards, Severe weather, 
better lightning mapping detection, and it will have instruments that can see the atmosphere chemistry, so air pollution type of activities. Uh, it will have a ocean color sensor for things that call for algal blooms, uh, so fish ecology and biology areas, and it will have what's called a hyperspectral sounder. That's very important to see the article profile of temperature and moisture, which is key for severe weather identification. Okay, last question for you, Tom. Uh, I just wanted to get a sense uh, of the mood there. I mean, I, I imagine it would be a combination of pride and excitement and a little anxiety, but but can you give us kind of a feel of what it's like down there today? It's, it's buzzing down here. It, a lot of people excited. We're, we're looking forward to it. I saw the satellite on the launch pad outside. It, it's going to be fantastic. A lot of years of hard work by many, many people from NOAA and NASA and our industry partners. It's exciting. Exciting time. Well, Tom, I, I'm, uh, I'm so excited to watch the launch and, of course, so excited to get some of that data right down in our, our weather computer so we can pass it along to our viewers. Uh, Tom Rank-Evans of, of NOAA, thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, good luck. What an exciting day for the weather community. So we will keep you posted on everything with GOES U that ultimately will graduate to GOES 19, let you know when it's in orbit and we start to see the first pictures. And before you know it, it'll be appearing on our weather computers and you'll be able to see it on television or online. It'll make our forecast even better. That's this edition of Weather or Not. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you to Tom Rank Evans of NOAA for giving us all that wonderful information. And we will see you next time on Whether or Not Rain or Shine.